I saw the story of a young woman who was going into another country to reach severely underprivileged children. You can plant a seed in the heart of a child and make them think, hey, you know what? An engineering career is not just about numbers. She said, you'll never know how you impacted this young man. That has left an indelible mark in my life. Welcome to Beyond Bosch. I'm Jessica Dahl. Today we have a guest, Mel Rivera, from our Fountain Inn facility. And he is going to talk to us a bit about the convergence of art and engineering and the importance of both and how they interact with each other. Hi, Mel. Hello, Jessica. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity where I get to share and hopefully inspire by some of the stories that I'll get to share with you guys. And yes, I'm coming up on my 30th anniversary at Bosch. Wow, that's amazing. I feel like you hear a lot of that at Bosch. There's a lot of people who have been here for quite a while. Well, prior prior to being hired at uh, uh, through this company, I was a machinist and I worked at a lot of small job shops and job shops are really connected to the economy. So it was either feast or famine. And when I heard that... Uh, you know, the Rex Roth name was coming uh, to the town where I lived. I was so eager to uh, put an end to that feast and famine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because uh, I like to eat and I have a mortgage, you know. <laughs> and uh, so it was great. So in 1990, uh, I started working here. And uh, my son was born the, just a few months before. So he's only ever known me to work at Bosch. Oh wow, that's kind of funny. Yeah, and my and my daughter as well. She was she was young when uh, when I started working here. She was like four or five. Now I've been ha uh, happily married for thirty eight years, and we have one grandson, Cruz, who's Aww. the love of my life and the joy of my life. Oh, that's if awesome. I could have had the grandchildren first, I would have had them first. But <laughs> <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> I, I had to like raise the other two to get that one. <laughs> So, okay, so getting back to your role at Bosch now, what do you do now? Well, the experience of working here and the product knowledge has really allowed me to be sort of an expert in the field of uh, purchasing quality. Um, I know what is a good part. I know what's a bad part. I'm familiar with the processes since I started as a CNC machinist way back then, so I know machining, um, and I have a good product knowledge. I've seen product develop, and so uh, in dealing with quality issues, uh, I feel all of those years are a valuable resource into helping not only solve problems, but to develop our vendors to a place where they're uh, more uh, a proficient provider of excellent quality products that end up in our product. Mm, yeah. You can't have a good product if the raw material coming in is not good. True. Makes so sense. So it's something that I've been doing partly for the last uh, 10 years. Okay. Great. And then I know that you have, um, I'm not sure at what point did you start kind of uh, working in the arts? And can you tell me a little bit more about that? Oh, working in the arts. Um let me see. This this goes way back. Um, let me see. Uh, well, just real quick. My my grandfather was a minister, and he used to uh, supplement his income through his, the sculptings that he would do. So he was kind of a sculptor. And then my dad inherited that art talent, and he was a photographer slash oil painter. So all of his children really inherited the blessing of art. And although you were given the gift like raw material, you had to develop it. Mm -hmm. So uh, my father and mother had nine. I'm number eight of nine, believe it or not. That's, that's, you don't hear those kind of numbers anymore. Uh, me and my younger brother, I think we pursued it the furthest in trying to develop our art talent, which ranges from me doing comic strips to political cartoons and news, local newspapers to uh, doing our own uh, independent or what they call indie comic book, which then kind of just developed into uh, pursuing art more uh, in a commercial side and trying to um, extract some earnings from the gifts, obviously, that we were given. 
And so I think art has always been present in my life. Uh, it's, it's a passion that will hopefully never go away. Uh, and it's a way that I allows me to express my life in a way that no other facet in my life allows me to do. Mm. And so I really treasure art and what it represents. Yeah, definitely. And that's so interesting that it goes back generationally and you've acknowledged that and seen that kind of come through. Allowing yourself to represent yourself with through art and, and you've developed this passion to kind of pass that on. Can you tell me more about that and what that looks like for you? Let me tell you, uh, my daughter is a, she's a third grade teacher. And so she has a, a, an active role in community and, in, and sharing and caring and developing young lives. She paints with, with the lives of children. That's, oh, that's what she does. She great. enjoys teaching them. So she knows that I've always shared a passion with this. So she transferred to a new school that was closer to her, <clears throat> to her home. And which is really close to the Bosch facility here. It's actually, uh, we're in Fountain Inn and the school is in Simpsonville, but we're like neighboring cities, probably four or five miles apart from the school f to my job. And she mentioned um, to the art teacher who was also new at Simpsonville Elementary that she said, you know, my dad is an artist and you should check out his artwork. And she sent her to my Instagram page and my Facebook page. She said, do you think your dad would be interested in doing sort of an artist in residence program? So I met with her at a local coffee shop and she shared her vision, which of course, like my daughter who knows me so well, ignited a passion in me. Uh, and she told me what she has been doing is she was a, a painter, but she was not not so good at penciling and so she was having some other uh, professionals come in that would share, you know, a bit of their day, come in and teach the students, well, of course, while she was in there under her supervision, and um, to share with them on a, even a professional level um, their craft or their passion or their talent. And I said, that that's wonderful. And so um, being the engineer as well as an artist, I started trying to calculate you know, how many vacation days I had and how many personal sure. days I had to uh, enable to uh, accomplish this. And so while I'm thinking about this, it's, it's, it's beyond an amazing coincidence. You, you know, the Bosch Zunder, I guess, there was a story about Christine Fielmeyer, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And uh, she is a Bosch employee, and she was involved in an educational project in Nicaragua set up to provide children and teenagers with art and music. And I read that article and it enthralled me because I knew what a wonderful company Bosch was to work for, but I did not know how much it is willing to reach out beyond the walls to its neighboring community. I knew that we did things for the underprivileged and the elderly, like around Christmas or Thanksgiving, collecting canned food uh, for food drives. And I knew that we did that. And I knew that, that our, our facility had donated several money to the community college here to develop, you know, technical programs. But I, I had no idea the, the, the reach of this company. And so that story really inspired me. And I went to my supervisors and uh, my HR manager here in Fountain Inn, and I just really shared with them uh, my vision, the story, and I, of course, gave them the link <laughs> to the Bosch Zunder article and said, "Hey, there's a, you know, there's a precedence for this." Sure. And so it was great. They said, "You know what? There is a program already in there." And if your supervisors are okay, um, they can approve the time for you to go. So not only did the door open for me to teach, but it also provided me to not, uh, how should I say, use my own funds out of my own pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like 
burn vacation days or personal days. Of course. And so Bosch was willing to pay my salary to teach these kids. And so I set up a banner acknowledging that I set up in the classroom, acknowledging that this is funded by Bosch. And I talk a little bit about Fountain Inn um, to the third to the fifth grade. And I was just overwhelmed with the generosity of this company to reach local communities and not just manufacture a product, but actually be a presence that helps mold and shape our communities into a more richer society. And I'm really, really, I sometimes, you may hear my voice crack because it's, you know, it's near and dear to my heart um, just to allow me to do that. And uh, is, I considered it a blessing. Wow, that is such a wonderful story and how that came about. And just for those listening, I wanted to clarify that the Zunder is an internal Bosch newsletter that shares um, industry topics and things that are going on around Bosch. So that is what you're referring to when you said you found this article with someone who was working with underprivileged C- kids, right? Correct, correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's so it's so great, such a great reminder to be um, inspired to do something. Uh, you were inspired by an article you saw and found an opportunity and went for it, and it worked out. You know, and if you wouldn't have asked, like you would have been probably still doing it, right? Burning your vacation days, but you only have so many. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and since you know that initial time, <clears throat> I think I started uh, the in October of uh, 2017, well, I noticed that the school had uh, limited resources, you know. Of course, I wanted to teach them on a professional level. I don't ever try to dumb down what I'm doing to anybody, but I try to get the gift in them to, you know, to arise. And so I noticed that the equipment that they had was just you know, just the very basics, like the yellow number two pencil. Mm -hmm. But in portrait drawing and the type of drawing that I'm doing, you use uh, bristle board, you use um, blending tools, you use drawing pencils, you use kneaded erasers, and they had none of that. And so I did a fundraiser at the school, and I was able to raise uh, nearly $200 during that fundraiser to buy art supplies for the school. And so I came back and I shared this vision with my purchasing department, which our our VP of purchasing allowed me to share the story and I shared some pictures. And it overwhelmed uh, the people in my department. You know, we have the basic Monday morning meeting where, you know, you go over facts and figures. Sure. And so when, when I got to share my story, they actually broke out in applause, which was <laughs> which took me back and so um throughout the day people donated and we were able to raise five hundred dollars for art supplies that was tremendous the story gets a little better if you allow me to keep on in this chain of thought please um i found out about uh the bosch community fund that um we can go now um to apply for grants how they invest in STEAM programs. And so I uh, applied for one of the grants and I was so totally blown away by how much they liked the program and I shared with them and I was able to uh, apply for a grant and they uh, purchased uh, more tools and a larger quantity for the school and they donated, you know, approximately $3,300 into this program and here again you might hear a crackle in my voice uh, because when I talk about the generosity of the Bosch Community Fund and what they did to help me pursue the dreams and to help shape children's lives it was really something to to see and feel Um, it went so well that I was able to it all coincided I was able to talked to the school, and I invited them to our Fountain Inn campus because I wanted to show uh, the connection between, between art and engineering. And so I wanted to show them that art can be as basic as drawing something on the pa- 
on a piece of paper to get an idea down so that other people can see what you're talking about and not just trying to imagine it, but make it, you know, one step to reality. But we, we showed them um, how art and engineering, it, it, it's a great flow, you know, hit Michelangelo. I mean, you know, he's an artist and engineer at the same time. And so I showed them our 3D printer. I showed them our uh, computer-aided drawing software, and we set up a tour, and we brought about 125, the whole third grade of Simpsonville Elementary, some parent chaperones, the principal, and they all got to tour our uh, robotics facility that we, we do, the Bosch um, robot facilities that we do here in conjunction with high school and college students. And uh, they got to see the, the robotics lab and they got to see the computer software and how an idea can get generated. And then even as cutting edge technology as uh, the, the, the 3D laser printers, and we all gave them a little gift of a hydraulic pump that was printed out of the 3D uh, laser printer. Oh, and so, so cool. those children wrote back letters saying they all wanted to work for Bosch, and uh, they all wanted to work for our robotics division. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. I mean, you are helping lay that foundation and that understanding, because I, I think that sometimes people don't realize that connection and the importance of art in engineering and in science roles, you know? Oh, yes. It's in everything, and I try to tell the kids, I said, you know, it's not just drawing superheroes or drawing whatever funny little cartoons they, they may want to do. I said, but, you know, somebody designed those sneakers, the jeans you wear, the sweaters, the car you drove this morning. Everybody uh, had part. There was an artist in every part of that step of designing that to bring it to life, and you're just broadening their horizon. Really, if you can plant a seed in the heart of a child during those three to fifth grade and make them think, hey, you know what? An engineering career is not just about numbers, but it, it can be a cool pursuit. You know, it fans the flame of kids that young. And then we even, we've introduced them and exposed them to a great company like Bosch where they, where they saw things, you know, that started as an idea and then came alive. We showed them the tractors that our hydraulic equipment power and move and articulate. And they, they loved all of that. They, you can just tell they were like little sponges soaking all of this up. I'm sure. Through your time doing this with the schools, have you had any students that kind of stand out for you? Are there any in particular stories with, with any students? Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> or she too thought many I to talked tell. a lot before. <laughs> um. I had a lot of the indie comic books just in storage that my brother and I did, and they were really written for more for the elementary school. And so they had good stories filled with action and adventure. And so I had these books in storage, and I thought, you know what, I am just going to uh, bring them to the school, and I'm just going to give them away to inspire them, mm. to inspire the children. And so uh, in in one of the art uh, sessions that we had, there was this one kid kind of quiet to himself. And uh, I was doing the lesson and I always tell the children, I'm not looking at how good it looks. I'm looking at how well you follow directions. That's what I'm looking at. And if I see you followed all of the directions, that looks beautiful to me. So I'm not judging based on appearance. I'm, I'm more of, you know, on technical. Did sure. they listen? Did they follow? And so when I looked at his drawing, it was amazing. He, he followed this to the letter, but he was kind of shy and very quiet. And so um, I gave him one of the comic books, and I kind of highlighted him to the class. And so I didn't think much of it. And so... During lunch, I eat with the kids. I sit with my daughter's class, and, and we have lunch together. So uh, the special education teacher came over, and she said, I want you to know, Mr. Rivera, that you gave a comic book to one of our students who's a challenge reader. 
um, and it kind of scared me there for a second. I thought, oh no, did I do something wrong? Sure. Did I give some reading material to a to a young child who's struggling with reading? That was really the first thought that crossed sure. my head, and I was almost going to apologize. And she said, and she must have saw the look on my face. She said, because I want to tell you something. He came back so excited about reading. She said, we we don't ever see him react excited about reading ever. She said, he came up to me and he said, Mrs. So-and-so, will you help me read this comic book that I was just given? And she told me that. She had watery eyes and then made me have watery eyes. I have watery and, eyes um, right now. <laughs> she, said, you, you, <laughs> she said, you'll never know how you impacted you know, the life of this young, it, now I've got watery eyes since you said that, uh, how you impacted this young man just by listening to him. You helped him get out of a shell and you gave him a reason to want to read. And that has left an indelible mark in my, my life. But uh, the teachers say that they love when I come because even the most uh, hardened or, or tough cases they they say that I have a way to disarm them, and I show them my art, and then I show them, I show them, because a lot of kids will tell me, Mr. Mel is what they call me. Mr. Mel, uh, we don't know how to draw, and I always tell them, that's okay, because I do, <laughs> and I'm here to teach you, and we're going to follow a process. And it almost already takes away all of the anxiety that they, you know, preconceive have about drawing. And uh, I have not seen a bad piece of artwork yet <laughs> produced from some of those children. Now, there are different levels of talent, but all of them, are they look precious and beautiful to me. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Multiple times through this talk, I've teared up, actually. So it's so I think that has to be so rewarding to have this opportunity and to spend that time and have these experiences with these kids and... Yeah, well, Mel, thank you so much for coming on and for your time and just for being who you are. And you just sound like just <laughs> such a wonderful person and just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you for this opportunity to share my story. My heart's desire, and really, uh, Jessica, why I shared this, uh, is hopefully there is another artist out there who's wondering what they should do with their art. And so I'll take you back to that Bosch Zunder newsletter. And uh, that encouraged me. I saw the story of a young woman who was crossing borders and going into another country, and another language to reach, you know, severely underprivileged children with a gift of art and to put smiles on their faces. Hopefully somebody will come across this podcast and I can be that catalyst in their lives. And if I could just address them, if you're thinking about your art and, and is it a waste, no, it's not. I think God gives talent to everyone and it should be used. It's not only for monetary, but it also can be used to shape and change the course of a young person or, a, or an individual. And art even gives hope. It has given hope to me. So take your talent, share it. To art is always meant to be shared. I mean, I mean, so many people who say, oh, I don't share my art or show my art to anybody. And I always ask them why. And I said, if you love it, chances are there's going to be other people who love it as well. Don't be afraid of a little criticism. It gives you more resolve to do better. And so uh, share that gift. Share that gift with somebody. I think that's, I mean, that's how we end it. I mean, that was perfect. Thank you. Next, we'll hear diversity and inclusion manager, Carmelita Yeisman, share how her personal journey led her on the path to create an emotionally safe workplace. Are you ready to challenge the way you think? 